Hey folks, this is Mr. Tardis, reporting from a hotel room in France. Yes, even though I'm away for work, I'm uh, doing a TV show at the moment in France, I wanted to take this opportunity to talk about the latest Big Finish box set, the latest War Doctor Begins box set, specifically Battlegrounds. Now, this is the third Big Finish uh, War Doctor Begins box set, starring Jonathan Carley, who is taken over from the late, great John Hurt as the War Doctor incarnation. Those of you who have been following my Big Finish reviews over the past year or so will know that I really gravitate towards Big Finish's Time War storylines. Whether it's the Eighth Doctor, the War Doctor, or the Gallifrey setting, I really love Big Finish's stuff in the Time War. It allows them to really rip loose and have a lot of fun with the premise. Including Volume 1 of The War Doctor Begins, Forged in Fire, released last year, it was my favourite Big Finish release of last year. It was a spectacular box set, an incredible debut for Jonathan Carley, loved everything about it. The second volume, Warbringer, I did like, but not as much as the first one, but with Battlegrounds, I think we're back at a return to form, because Battlegrounds is an incredibly good release, astonishingly good big finish, an incredible trilogy of stories. We've got The Keeper of Light by Phil Morine, Temesis by Rossa McPhillips, and Rewind by Timothy Exitac. The behind the scenes talks about how it's called Battlegrounds because it's not just the literal time war and the conflict on the battlefield, but also the battlegrounds inside of the mines. You know, the battlegrounds are the friends we made along the way. However, in my opinion, the theming of Battlegrounds is more found in its supporting cast. The supporting characters in all three stories are incredibly well textured. All three stories give the War Doctor a companion surrogate, with the first story, The Keeper of Light, really leaning into this by casting Emma Campbell-Jones. If you recognise that name, she played Cass in The Night of the Doctor, which was that eighth Doctor War Doctor regeneration story for the 50th anniversary, where Emma Campbell-Reese plays that hopeful companion of the eighth Doctor who then winds up dying. And in a really clever piece of meta-casting, she's now been cast cast here in the Keeper of Light as the actual War Doctor companion, Layla Bridge. As we find the Doctor and Layla not in the Time War, but on Earth. In fact, they're in a Scottish coastal town. Well, I say town, it's one cottage. You've got this couple, David and Dorothy, who are having marital problems there, and there's some weird goings on at the lighthouse nearby. It's such a bold way to start this box set with a story that has seemingly, on the face of it, nothing to do with the Time War. You could plop Eccleston or Tennant or Smith or Capaldi into this setting, but instead it's the War Doctor and seeing how he reacts to a quote normal Doctor life. Like, what is that like? How does he respond? How is he around people? Let's play a quick clip. Uh, just borrowing a few satellites to triangulate the signal. Borrowing. Yes, a bit delicate, really. Countries can be so prickly about these things. And I'd rather not kick off World War Three. Please don't. David and Dorothy may not appreciate that. Though it could put their relationship issues into perspective. Issues? You must have clocked it. Must I? They're on a bit of a make-or-break trip, and it seems to be breaking. David didn't mention anything. To the invading madman talking about psychic energy signals. I wonder why. Good lord. It's like a mini version of Jodrell Bank in here. How's dinner coming? Oh, I've been dismissed. Apparently, I, I don't know how to braise meat properly. Well, there is an act to it. I'll go down and help. Rather you than me when she's in this mood. Try to be human with him, OK? So, Layla says your marriage is in trouble. I... what? I'll just get this out of the way now. Jonathan Carley is incredible in this box set. Throughout all three stories, I'm not saying he was bad before, it felt like he was finding his feet, but you can really tell a difference. You can really tell that there's been a growth from Forged in Fire to Battlegrounds. He's really found his footing in the part. He had it already, but now you can tell he's really, really comfortable in these shoes. He does so well because the natural timing and the pauses and the pathos he gives this Doctor incarnation. But the Keeper of Light is a little bit of fluff. In a good way, though, it is so distant and so different from what other Time War stories have been so far in all these box sets that it's really notable just existing in its current form. Emma Campbell-Jones is great as the companion that the War Doctor never got to have. Like I said, some wonderful meta casting there, but you've also got, oddly enough, Ken Bones and Adele Anderson as David and Dorothy. They're the bickering couple. 
And if you recognize the names of those actors, they are Time War staple actors. Ken Bones is the general on screen. Adele Anderson is a Tamerson, who's done loads of Time War box sets. So what are they doing in these roles? Well, there's some twists and turns in the story that I'm not going to spoil in this review, of course. The setting of the lighthouse and the coastal area is really well portrayed by the soundscape. Hugh Ross, as well, is a great villain. The Keeper, who I would love to hear more of in the future. Whether or not we do, that's kind of the whole point of the story. Like I said, I'm not really going to spoil anything here. The Keeper of Light is really good, but to be honest, even if it was a bit middling in terms of its story and its characters, just the setting and putting the War Doctor in a conventional Doctor story was really fascinating and I loved the last five minutes. But let's move on to the second story, Temesis by Rossa McPhillips. So Temesis is the name of a ship that the War Doctor gifts the Thals in order to help give them equal footing to the Daleks in the Time War. And all of a sudden, everyone watching this video thought, oh yeah, the Thals, what were they doing during the Time War? Oddly enough, I don't think Expanded Media has ever clarified, so this could be the first time the Thals have actually been in a Time War story, which is a bit odd. But anyway, something has gone wrong with the ship, however, the Daleks want it, the Time Lords want it back, or there's some weird double-crossing and conspiracy stuff, and this is your more standard Time War story, for better or for worse. We get Rose Persister as Sulal, who's a Thal who really wants to work their way up to General and be at the top of the chain of command. She's our companion surrogate character. You've also got Gilda, played by Troy Alexander, but the cast standout here is David Warwick, who plays Dylon. And David Warwick, if you've watched Army of Ghosts, the series 2 penultimate story, he's the police commissioner. You know, everyone stay in your homes. He's that guy. Random casting, but I love it. So Dylon is a Thal hero who may have double-crossed the Thals in order to give the Daleks the ship. What's his reasoning? What's his motive? Is he actually betraying the Thals? It's the twist of the story, I'm not going to spoil it. But the journeys leading up to the conclusion of Temesis were really interesting, and this is what I was on about earlier, about all of the characters being so textured. All of the characters at the beginning of the story go through a journey which fundamentally changes their outlooks by the end of the story. Dylon, Sulau, Gilda, they all go through these really interesting mini-arcs. And in a story that's just under an hour long and is just audio, like you have no visual frame of reference here, it's really difficult to do, but it works really well. Will the captain be arrested? I admire your loyalty, Gilda. I really do. Dylon's been good to me. Didn't you used to be friends? Once. Before he contacted the Daleks. Will you promise me he'll be treated leniently? He's not right. His wife... There's loyalty to friends, and then there's a the blind leading the blind. You can tell me all you want about Dylon's reasons, but he nearly got everyone killed. He may still do. I know. And destroying the Helm's Drive? What was that? I was doing my duty. Your duty is to question leaders. Make them accountable. Make them justify their reasons. Otherwise, people die. Needlessly. I also really appreciated the world building from both the Daleks and also the Thals. You know, what have the Thals been doing in the Time War? How do the Gallifreyans treat them? And also, how do Daleks torture other Daleks? And I really liked the Dalek interactions. There's only a couple of scenes there, but the Dalek time strategist makes an appearance, and I love Nicholas Briggs in that role. He's so good as the Dalek time strategist. While Temesis is a really good story, it does suffer a little bit from being the middle chapter. It is the normal Time War story that sandwiched between two really distinct and interesting non-counter-time like, war stories. You've got The Keeper of Light, of course, but also the last in the trilogy, Rewind, by Timothy X Attack. Now, Rewind is a story that has the War Doctor in it, but it's not about the War Doctor. It's about Ignis, played by Sarah Moss. And Rewind is set on Lasuna, a planet that is caught in a perpetual Groundhog Day loop because of some time war shenanigans. A new breed of Dalek, the Berserker Daleks, are are devouring the planet. They're described as normal Daleks with a scattershot aim and, and all-encompassing weaponry, but also like trailed by black smoke and black fog. And I loved the imagery of like a black cloud, like a force of nature just devouring the planet and then time resets, and then it happens all over again. But what sets Rewind apart from all other Groundhog Day-type stories is that the whole planet is in on the Rewind. 
everyone knows that they're resetting. They've lived for like over 400 days in this conflict and they die at the end of it and then it resets again. And the people of the planet get to witness the Daleks just destroy their whole civilization over and over again and then wake up the next day and lose the battle all over again. And you've got Ignis who is in charge of poetry and communications and she does a prayer at the end of every day that people join in on and then she wakes up the next day and does it all over again. The story almost starts off as like a companion chronicle but then around 400 and 20 days in, she notices as the loop is being reset, a castle in the distance, and there's some strange light patterns coming from the top of the castle. And during the next loop, she goes to investigate. And of course, who does she find? A magician. If you're going to be in here, don't wave that thing around. There isn't room. Release us! <laughs> what the? Stop! What do you think you're doing? Release us ah. from this curse! <laughs> Don't just keep... Stop it! Stop it! This, this isn't useful! Release us from this curse! Why do you keep saying that? I'm not a... Oh! I'm not a wizard! Well, maybe don't keep rewinding time from inside a castle, then! And this is what I'm referring to when I refer to the War Doctor as more a supporting character in this story. This is Ignis trying to come to terms with finding hope again. Is it worth living in this loop? Is the War Doctor a saviour or a torturer? And what will the War Doctor do in order to try and break this loop? And there's only so many more times that he's able to do this before the Daleks are finally able to encompass the castle and kill him and then wipe out everyone else on the planet. The moral dilemma is genuinely fascinating and so expertly woven into all of the characters as well. Like, yeah, you can say that it's best that these people live in hope and they get another chance at life, but no matter what happens, no matter what the end of the day entails, halfway during the day, one of the character's families on the other side of the planet is going to die. He's going to receive a phone call letting him know that fact. No matter what happens, they're going to be living with that guilt and that dread. And because it's revealed that the War Doctor has found some way to engineer this loop, does that mean that he's taken the destiny of the people on this planet out of their hands? Is it his decision to make? Rewind takes the Groundhog Day formula and just builds layer upon layer of nuance and some really interesting thematic weight. Ignis is a wonderful character. Sarah Moss's performance is a revelation. I was amazed to discover that she's not been in Doctor Who or done work for Big Finish before, as far as I'm aware. She's superb. She's amazing. She's like companion material. She's an absolute find, and I really hope that Big Finish find more projects of her in the near future. I wish her all of the best. She's so great in this story. The Daleks are really scary. Even if their appearance is a bit minimal, they are more like an omnipresent cloud looming over the situation, as opposed to like a bang bang plunger in the face antagonist. My one nitpick for this story is that there is a general character who's a bit like cliche for this role. You know, shoot first, ask questions later. Oh, we have to kill and shoot the doctor. Why? Because I said so. There's some great scenes with them, but I also loved how he gives this great monologue about what he and his soldiers do whenever the loop resets and then the war doctor just instantly shoots him down in one line like a couple of scenes later that was some really great setup and then payoff the really experimental timey-wimey elements and some of the really profound visuals that we get this is absolutely the same writer who gave us planet of the end in the ninth doctor adventures respond to all calls that was like a really experimental out there story same writer you can tell and the ending, like like I said, I've been working away in France, been doing some driving back and forth at the beginning and end of every day, and I listened to this story on the way back to the hotel, and I was on my own in the car, thankfully, listening to it over the speakers, and when the credits rolled, I was like shouting swears, like screaming to myself, like, oh my god, they went there. The ending is so brave, it's... I can't even tell you how I felt about it, because that would spoil the ending, but... Oh my god, Rewind's ending is like... Dagger to the heart. I watch a lot of Doctor Who, I listen to a lot of Big Finish. I don't think an ending has hit me quite as hard as Rewind has in a long time. Superb. Listening to the behind the scenes, it would appear that I've interpreted that ending a little bit differently from everybody else, but... 
Either way, the interpretations are valid, but my gut reaction to that ending was uh, full of swears. I, ca I can't repeat it. Rewind has instantly jumped up into my top three War Doctor stories. You've got The Shadow Vortex by uh, David Llewellyn, you've got Lionheart by Lou Morgan, and now you've got Rewind by Timothy X Attack. An incredible set of War Doctor stories, but this box set itself was really really good like there's not a bad story here but keeper of light and rewind those are special and saying that makes me feel bad for temesis because temesis is also really really good it is just more war doctor time war stuff which is fine i promise it's not as mean as it sounds but battlegrounds is superb an incredible big finish box set probably one of my favorites of the year so far along with the ninth doctor back to earth like those two just almost back to back from big finish they're on a roll. They're on one hell of a streak. The next big finish box that I've got to listen to is the Waterworld's Sixth Doctor one. That's going to be next, probably next week. Really looking forward to that one. But yeah, so the War Doctor begins. Battlegrounds is is a must listen. It's an incredible like box set. I think you should check it out regardless of whether or not you've listened to any War Doctor in the past. Forged in Fire is still terrific and I recommend picking that one up as well. But Forged in Fire, Battlegrounds, you've got two, like near 10 out of 10 box sets to listen to from the War Doctor Begins set with Jonathan Carley doing an incredible job going from strength to strength. I can't wait for Volume 4 coming out in a couple of months' time. That's it for my review of the War Doctor Begins Battlegrounds. I shall see you folks next time. Au revoir.